This is the 14th video in this tutorial series dealing with the skeleton model in Blender. And in the last video I said we were going to look at developing an action and posing this model a bit. And playing around with that I've discovered a problem with my model. And the problem lies in the pelvis bone and the fact that it is a type of a master bone where both the upper body chain and the lower body chain are parented to it and this restricts my ability to pose it. I knew this would be a case that this bone would act like that but I didn't know that it would prove to be a problem in the case of animating it and the problem is that I need to be able to control this bone to develop something like a walk cycle and I need it in a different fashion so I'm gonna edit that bone and I'm gonna try to do it quickly first off I'm gonna duplicate it and pull it forward along Y I'm going to disable its deform option so it's not set to deform. Change the name to master. And then reparent some things. I'll reparent the hip bones to the master bone. And they used to be child of the pelvis. And now they'll be child of master. And then the pelvis itself I will make child of master. And that changes the nature of the pelvis bone and it's now a poseable bone and this bone is now the master bone that will rotate the entire model so rotating it will ro rotate the entire model but rotating the pelvis will simply pose the model and that's going to prove pretty handy in developing a walk cycle I've done some online reading for a walk cycle and what I've read is that the first pose to develop is called the contact pose and the contact pose is the longest point in the stride of a walk cycle so I'm going to rotate one leg using the control key and I'm going to rotate it by 30 degrees forward the other leg I'm going to rotate by 30 degrees backwards or 25 degrees backwards I should say and then I'm going to scale them and I'm going to use text to scale it by 9 I should say 0 0.9, 8, hmm, 0.99. And that's going to give it a small amount of curl. And I'll scale this one by the same amount, 0 0.99. And that just gives a little bit of a natural flex to the bone. At this point, I'm going to need to add something to my scene, and what I'm going to need is a floor. So I'm going to go into object mode very quickly, center my cursor, snap it to the grid, add a cube. I'll use my manipulator here as being an easy method to manipulate this. Then I'm going to scale the cube, and I'm going to scale it limiting the z-axis so it doesn't get taller, but it gets bigger in two directions. And then I'll scale it along z and slim it down a whole bunch, because I don't need it that big and obtrusive. And I'll scale that down even thinner. And then looking at this model, the way that it's posed, it's good to consider what would be happening with the model. And in this pose, what actually happens is the front leg comes down and hits the ground and the back leg prepares to come up. So we want to line up our ground with the front leg. So we'll zoom in and have a closer look. And line up the ground so that it's contacting the front leg and go back into pose mode into wireframe so we can see a little better and I'm gonna work in my large window quite a bit here and I'll rotate the foot so that it's sitting on top of the ground and although this is pretty rough um, I think that it's a good start for for a walk cycle now there's a couple of bones I'd like to handle differently. This bone, the master bone, I'm going to set a keyframe for it and that frame is going to be simply location. And then for all of the leg bones, I'll select those. And 
and I'll set a keyframe of rotation scale. Then I'll go into the pose dialog and copy the current pose. I've decided on a stride, uh, stride length of 20 frames, so I'll advance to frame 21. If you notice, right now, the highlighted bone, the last bone selected, is the toe on the backward back, back posed foot. So it's the one that's rotated backwards. We're going to paste flipped pose. And this is going to alternate the positions of the legs. And now the highlighted toe is in the forward position. And we're on frame 21 here. That's important. So I'll set a rotation scale keyframe for that. I'll also set a location scale, a location keyframe for my master bone. And then reselect my toes. My feet aren't legs, I should say. I'll advance forward another 20 frames to frame 41. And I'll paste pose. And by pasting pose, I'm pasting the pose I initially copied in frame 1. And the highlighted toe returns to the back. So I'll set another keyframe, rotation scale, to the legs. And to the master bone, I'll set a location scale, a location frame. And this is the beginning of our walk cycle. And I'll just frame through it back to 1 and then forward to 41. And from here we can start developing our motion. I'll go back to frame 1. If we use the up and down arrow keys, we can go forward and backwards by 10 frames. 10 frames is 1 quarter of our cycle and 1 half of a stride. So I'll go forward 10 frames. Notice the feet are now inside of the ground and this is going to need correcting. I'll select the master bone, grab it along the z-axis, and line the foot up with the ground. So at frame 11, I will press the I key and set a location keyframe for the master bone. Now if I go forward another 10, I'll be at the first stride or one half of the cycle. And at 31, I'm at three quarters of the cycle and again the feet are inside of the ground. So I'll go back to frame 11 where I still have the master bone selected and I'll copy the pose and then go forward to frame 31 where there's a problem and I'll paste the pose and that will pull the bone up to its pose location and the feet out of the ground. So I'll set a location frame for the master bone. With those done, now when we frame through, our feet will stay on the ground. And that's the first step in a process called betweening. First off, we set the outside parameters of our motion. And this is the outside parameter of our motion. And then by setting location frames in frame 11 and frame 31, we began betweening and refine that motion to where the feet weren't going in the ground. In the next video, we'll further refine that motion. We'll look how the legs should act in different portions of the stride. And kind of look at where weight balance will shift, when legs should be touching the ground, the way their feet should be rotating, when the legs should be preparing to come off of the ground, and the way the feet should be rotating for that. And We'll set a couple more keyframes in and develop this walk cycle a little bit further. Um, perhaps also we'll discover a need to refine our initial keyframes as well to make them look more convincing. So that'll be in the next video, and until then, happy modeling.